my final comments to um, teachers and administrators and educational school systems that house the students that we are teaching here at ECLI. And I think that the most important thing that I want administrators and teachers to know is that debate practice, uh, debate teams, having debate competition is one of those really unique activities that you don't get just by having students have access to basketball or arts or music uh, or any of these other things that educational systems spend money on as as a part of their yearly budgets. There is nothing that you can invest in that will have more of an effect on your students' future than debate. It will teach them the research skills, the communication skills, the ability to pass exams, to write good papers. It will prepare them for college, even when you don't have AP classes at your schools, even when you don't have the ability to train them to be successful in top-notch colleges, debate will do that. And so if you will just invest in your students' future, future by using debate practice as a means to an end of getting more of your students to graduate. You want to see your dropout rates go away? Invest in debate as a part of your curriculum. Invest in a debate team. You want to see more of your students graduating at the top of their class rather than middling around at the bottom? Then add debate practice. You want to see those students that you think talk too much and don't pay enough attention to school? Then give them something that fascinates them. Have them read things that are about their real lives, about the material circumstances that they are existing in. But what you're giving them are books and language and information. You're giving them knowledge that you are regurgitating from someone else's history, from someone else's culture, from someone else's society, and they are reacting to that. They're not interested, they're not excited. We want them engaged, and when you look at the video, when you see how engaged the students are at the Institute, there's your proof. When have you ever seen a group of students like this who don't come from you know middle class families in large part, their families are not rich, but neither are they all poor. These are, this is just the average black student body. And to watch their excitement about and their energy about learning is astounding and it's amazing. We walked into the uh, common room last night in the dorm after we came back for, from dinner with the students. And they were in there, and you would think they'd be in there watching TV or listening to music or playing cards, you know, or just fooling around with one another. But we walk in and there are laptops open and they are revising the work that they have been working on all day. And it's nine o'clock at night. The reason that they are doing that without us telling them go study or go work is because they are fascinated by their growing intelligence. They are fascinated when they realize that they can be agents in their own learning. Right? Let's get rid of that banking model of education. Let's replace it with something that's intellectually curious and exciting and look at the product. We have PhDs. We have people who are lawyers. We have people who are published scholars. We have people winning national honors. This is not a mistake. It is simply a practice of debate. And if we want our students to get better, if we really want to change what inner city American education looks like, then we're not, we can't wait on the federal government to give us the funding. We can't wait on the state government to find the funding, all of that's in budget crisis. You all have a choice to make. You know, are we going to save our students or are we not? And that's the only question.